Hello everyone, this is Robert, and in this video we're going to be playing with lasers. I have this project that I'm working on that's a relatively large 3D printed piece that I want to add text to. I want to either engrave it or mark it somehow so I can, you know, label it. And I thought the fiber laser would be a good idea. Of course I could use, you know, a different color filament and do it like that, but I kind of want the fine detail that only a laser can provide. So I've already done some testing on this, but what I want to figure out in this video is how it interacts with all sorts of different materials. So I have all of these different types of materials and colors, and I have done a lot of testing already. So let's dive right in and start playing around with lasers and 3D printing. As always, please feel free to use the chapters to skip around in this video. So we're going to start off by talking about the elephant in the room, and that is, do you need to use a fiber laser for this process? And the answer is probably. The wavelength is very critical. So what we're not doing is we're not really engraving the plastic as much as we're vaporizing out the pigment in the plastic. Plastic doesn't really engrave with a laser, it just kind of melts. So if we use a CO2 laser or even some diode lasers, it's just going to kind of melt the surface, and that's not what we're after. What we're trying to do is closer to tattoo removal, where it just kind of vaporizes out the ink, or vaporizes out the pigment, and then we're left with just kind of the bare plastic underneath. So that's what we're trying to do, so the wavelength is very critical, and the wavelength of a fiber laser is perfect for this. There are some diode lasers that have the same wavelength. I think some UV lasers also have that as well. But the other factor is you gotta move very, very quickly. If you let that heat build up, the plastic will just sit there and burn, and that is going to ruin the result as well. So most likely you're going to need to use a laser with a galvo head. And the galvo head is just a series of mirrors that steer the laser around. For all these reasons, I'm suspecting that the results are going to be very different for different types of materials. So that's why I have all these samples printed out, and I'm going to try it on all different types of colors and all different types of filament to see kind of what works best. For my initial testing, I'm suspecting that black is going to be the only one that's going to engrave well, but I have a lot of different types of black, and I also have a lot of different types of PLA just for fun. I don't think the um, yellow and the white and this light gray are going to do anything, but we will see. A lot of different types of dark colors. I've got PETG, PLA carbon fiber, TPU, Nylon X, and then ASA. I think this should cover most of the bases, so let's just give it a shot and see how all of these end up marking. So we should probably first talk about settings. Um, I'm here inside EasyCAD, and you can see I've got this little test thing set up. It's like 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters, which corresponds with those little swatches that I made. I did find that you kind of need to hatch everything, which is kind of like filling, right? All of these are hatched because just the fine lines just don't really show up well on the bare plastic. The tiny text is about two millimeters tall, so it's relatively small, and it does okay. I think you're going to want to go a little bit bigger than this. I think this text down here, the four millimeters, is probably about the smallest fine detail that you would want to have. Now, everyone's laser is going to be a little bit different, but here's what I found works out. We are doing a speed of 3250, so relatively fast relatively low power at only 15%. This is a 50 watt fiber laser, so you might need to make some adjustments if you have a different wattage on your laser. I have the frequency set to 200. This is kind of a recommendation from Clow. I was kind of talking to him about this a little bit. The laser itself really only goes up to, I think, 120 kilohertz. I just have 200 in here just for grins. It kind of lets me do that. We will see. It works out. And then down here you have all of your offsets. This is something that you need to calibrate for your specific laser, and I think I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on, but this is actually pretty critical. This value was, I don't know, something like 200 initially, and I found that negative 250 was spot on and exactly what I needed. So you'll need to calibrate this for your particular machine, but basically we're using a speed of 3250 with a power of 15 and the highest frequency you can 
put in there. So let's go do some lasering. Normally, I would set up the mic next to the fiber laser so you could hear all the cool laser sounds, but with plastic, it doesn't make any sounds at all. There's just not that much material being removed, so you don't hear anything other than just the exhaust, which wouldn't be very fun. But it was really cool to put all these different swatches on there and just kind of see what happens. I was definitely surprised by a few of these. Some of them worked really well, some of them didn't work as well as I thought they would. And I did make some minor adjustments throughout this. Um, sometimes, you know, I did one side and it didn't really look the way I'd wanted. So I made a couple tweaks and flipped it over to the other side. And I'll talk about that in the end. But just making minor adjustments to the speed and the power, those are the only two things that I really messed with. They could dramatically change the results that you would get. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But it was fun to see each one of these kind of being revealed and just being surprised every time. So here are the results from the PLA testing. As you could see in the video, these um, bright colors really just didn't do anything, but these darker and kind of more bold colors did a really good job. Surprisingly, this, um, I think this was like stone gray hatchbox matte PLA, this ended up showing up. I was kind of surprised. It's not great, but you know, it does show up. I think the matte filaments tend to work pretty well. The surprising one was the white. I knew the white wouldn't do anything. This was the other side, nothing happened. But throwing some Sharpie on it, I just quickly threw some Sharpie on it and that's surprising. I'm gonna have to keep this trick in the back of my mind because in theory you could do a reverse of this. There's some tricks here. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, but overall, my favorite was this dark gray green from Polymaker. This looks great. And um, this is one of my new favorite filaments. It's kind of this brown color, um, but it's just kind of a neat color. And then um, this green one was also surprising. But any of the dark kind of blacks or grays end up looking really nice. This dark blue was kind of surprising. So that's what the PLAs look like. Let's go into the black kind of engineering materials and see what happens there. So the results from the second batch weren't nearly as good. Up top here we have PETG and ASA, and not surprisingly, these did pretty good. I did have to adjust the settings quite a bit. As you can see, the backsides of these are done as well. They needed slightly different settings. They were a lot more sensitive, so they needed lower power and faster speed, but they ended up looking really, really nice. However, for the, um, yeah, that's TPU, Nylon X, and Carbon Fiber, these just did not turn out great at all. The TPU was really strange. I ran this maybe like five separate times, just over and over and over, and it just kind of never really did a whole lot, which is weird. And it didn't even start melting, which um, PLA just starts melting kind of after the second pass, but just a very faint marking on that one. And the carbon fiber is kind of the same thing. I did several passes on these. You can kind of see several passes and they just kind of never really lightened up much more than that. And that's not terribly surprising. The fiber laser probably just can't get through the um, carbon fiber on there. So just something to keep in mind. And you can see the, like the tiny text at the top is just kind of burned in. It really didn't do that much with it. But ASA and PETG ended up doing really nicely as I expected and hoped. So the last thing I want to talk about is calibrating your hatch settings. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. I have a video linked down below that kind of explains all of this and how to do it. But in short, when your laser is scanning back and forth, you need to make sure that the laser is turning on and off at the proper time so that everything gets nice and lined up. And if you do that, you can end up with these very sharp, very crisp markings. When I first started out, I was having some issues with 
some like shadowing or ghosting and it just really wasn't that crisp, I went through and calibrated these. Now, if you look at this card, these two might look identical, but they're not. One of them is pre-calibrated, one is post-calibrated. And the only way you can really see this is through a microscope or a loop. And basically you're adjusting these on and off settings, getting it just right, and that will end up with a perfectly crisp marking or engraving. So definitely check out that link down below. These are definitely settings that you need to adjust to get the best results. So I learned a lot through all of this testing. And one of the things I learned is that every material, every filament is gonna be completely different. You just gotta print off some swatches, put them in the laser, try some settings and see what happens. The one big thing that I learned and one big takeaway is if you're testing out different settings, a little change in the settings can go a long way. The difference between 3000 and 3200 is actually pretty big. And the difference between like 20% and 25% or 15 and 20 is actually pretty big. So make very small changes and just do a lot of testing. I did so much testing for this video and for this project, and I learned a lot from it. The other thing I learned is that it's a bit counterintuitive. So if you're marking a plastic and it's darker than you want, you actually need to decrease the amount of power or increase the speed. When it's dark, that means you vaporized all of the pigment and now you're just burning into the plastic. So it kind of seems a little counterintuitive, but if it's too dark, it's not that you didn't have enough power, it's that you had too much power. So definitely keep that in mind. That was kind of an aha moment that I had when I was trying to get it lighter and lighter and lighter. I was actually adding too much power. So once I started backing off on the power, then things started kind of clicking. But this is definitely a process that I'm gonna be using in the future. I think maybe next week I'll have that video ready, but I really like the idea of using a fiber laser to mark and put text on things. It's really fantastic. So for anyone I'm wondering and anyone asking, this is a CloudRay QS50. This is a 50 watt fiber. I have a link down below for a video review. I've been loving this thing. I'm really having a lot of fun having it here in the shop. I also have a GWIC G2, which is a 20 watt laser. They have the same fiber source, just different power settings. Um, it's just, I'm gonna use the Cloud Ray. The Cloud Ray is a lot nicer of a laser, but if you have a lower power laser like the GWIC, or if you have one of those um, Galvo head diode lasers, that actually might work. You're just gonna have to play around with it a little bit print off some swatches, do some different settings, and just kind of see what works for you. But hopefully this will give you a better idea of what kind of results you can achieve with a fiber laser on 3D printed parts. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.